भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदंत स्वामी नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाचारिणे निर्दिशेषा शून्यवादी पश्चाश धारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम Let's read the introduction prayer. Page one, Bhagavad Gita as it is. And then uh, Paramatma Prabhu, you can read English for us immediately after that, please. Oma Gyana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshur Unmilitamyena, Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Svayam Rupa Kadamayam, Dadadi Svapadantikam, Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam, Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahakana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam, Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahakana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha, 
हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदा वृंदेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंदा श्री अद्वैता गाधार श्री वासादी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय परमात्मा प्रभु हरे कृष्णा I was born in the darkest ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with a torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. When was Tira Rupa Goswami Prabhupad who was established within the, this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya give me shelter under his lotus feet. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master and unto the feet of all Vaishnavas. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Tila Rupa Goswami, along with his elder brothers Sanatana Goswami, as as well as Raghunath Dasa and Raghunath Bhatta, Gopala Bhatta and Tila Jeeva Goswami. I offer my respectful obeisances to Lord Chait, Lord Krishna Chaitanya, and Lord Nityananda, along with Advaita Acharya, Gadadhar, Srivas, and other associates. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Mati Radharani and Sri Krishna, along with their associates. Sri Lalita and Vishaka, oh my dear Krishna, you are the friend of the distressed and the source of all creation. You are the master of the gopis and the lover of Radharani. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respects to Radharani, whose bodily complexion is like molten gold, and who is the queen of Vrindavan. You are the daughter of King Vishabhu, and you are very dear to Lord Krishna. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. they can fulfill the desires of everyone just like desire trees and they are full of compassion for the fallen souls i offer my obeisances to shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nitinanda shri advaita gadar shri vas and all others in the line of devotion thank you hari krishna maharaj ji thank you hari krishna prabhu so welcome again to everybody to this evening hari krishna mata ji hari krishna mata ji hari krishna mata ji Okay, I think last week we stopped at um, verse sixty-three. Is that right? Uh, the devotees who are present. We're starting from sixty-four. Is that right? Yes. Today. Yes. Right. That's correct. Okay. All right. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to give um, uh, a five-minute uh, slot to Navkishor Mataji just now. <laughs> to just uh, introduce us to parikshit maharaj briefly just for about 5 minutes that's okay with you all because last week we used parikshit maharaj as a very nice example in our class and he's a very prominent and important character we should all at least have a little bit of knowledge on who uh, parikshit maharaj is so i think let uh, mata ji do that now are you ready mata ji yes mata ji Okay. Yes, just give us a, a brief on who Parikshit Maharaj is, and then we'll start our uh, verses. We're hoping to finish uh, chapter two today. We've got up to sure, seventy-two, and then we'll discuss at the end. But you go on now, Nandishri Mataji, if you're ready. Yes, Mataji. Sure. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dear devotees, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to your divine service also. Hare Krishna. Hmm. i like to introduce about uh, maharaj parikshit uh, he was a great devotee of the lord and because of him we are uh, getting now the knowledge of shrimad bhagavatam so um, parikshit maharaj was a uh, grandson of uh, arjuna uh, uh, arjuna also was a great devotee of the lord as you know arjuna uh, is a 
uh, uh, is also a devotee of Lord Shri Krishna and he is a cousin of also Lord Shri Krishna. So uh, Arjuna married to uh, Lord Shri Krishna's sister, Subhadra. Uh, so Subhadra Maharani uh, is Lord Shri Krishna's uh, sister and uh, she had a son uh, called Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu who killed in uh, Mahabharata, uh, where, where Mahabharata happened in Kurukshetra. So Abhimanya also married to uh, Uttara. Uh, so uh, Princess Uttara and uh, uh, Prince Abhimanyu got married. So after that, uh, when he was killed by um, uh, Kaur Kurus, all Kauravas, uh, Uttara was uh, pregnant by Maharaja Parikshi. So she couldn't get herself into Sati Pratha. That time it was a Sati Pratha. Uh, like uh, she has to go behind the husband in the fire. But uh, she couldn't go because she has to uh, take care of Maharaja Parikshit. And Maharaja Parikshit was a great devotee of the Lord. And uh, Maharaja Parikshit, uh, he was a great ruler of the, um, uh, he was a great king also for his kingdom. He, he got all the qualities like for uh, King I I Ishwaku, he was like, like uh, he was like a great uh, um, uh, maintaining in the in his uh, kingdom. He was also compared to Lord Rama because he he has a he uh, he has a quality of that uh, that he can keep his promises. Uh, whenever he gives somebody promise, uh, he keep that promises. Then he was uh, also we uh, uh, he was also compared with the King Shibi uh, because King Shibi was a protector of his uh, uh, surrender. So uh, Maharaja Parikshit also like that. Whoever, whoever surrendered to him, uh, he uh, he get, he can get any limit to protect them. Uh, so Maharaja Parikshit have a lot of qualities of different devotees of the Lord. Like uh, King Maharaj Dushyanta's quality, he has uh, uh, because he want he is also spreading name and fame of his uh, his uh, dynasty. Then he was also in uh, only the Pandavas like a uh, clan from Pand uh, from Pandavas. Uh, uh, because uh, because Ashwastama, who was uh, uh, who was having an enmity against uh, Pandavas, uh, so he killed all the Pandavas, the Draupadi's son, all five Pandavas' son, uh, in a sleep, uh, and he was also behind uh, Parikshit Maharaj also. So um, Ashwastama was a, uh, a Brahmana, and he uh, he was the son of uh, Dronacharya. Dronacharya was a guru of uh, Arjuna. So um, it's like all uh, things ca carrying on uh, from Mahabharata slowly, slowly, uh, one by one, step by step. So um, after Dronacharya killed by uh, Arjuna, uh, Ashwasama had enmity towards Arjuna. So Arjuna wanted to kill whole uh, family of Pandava. Uh, sorry, Ashwasama wanted to kill whole family of Arjun, uh, Pandavas. So that's why he was behind the behind the Maharaja Parikshit and he uh, wanted to kill uh, in the um, womb of Uttara. So he uh, threw uh, um, Brahmastra and uh, uh, as soon as uh, uh, um, Uttara get to, got to know that Brahmastra came to nearby he, her womb, uh, he, uh, she ran to the Lord and she takes the shelter of the Lord and Lord went to in Uttara's uh, womb and she uh, and Lord protect Maharaja Parikshit. So he got a, Maharaja Parikshit also got a boon by, uh, uh, by Lord. And he was always uh, protected by the Lord. So he uh, can never be ki uh, killed by um, like, uh, what you say, like uh, sinners. So now Maharaja Parikshit ha was a very great uh, uh, devotee of the Lord and very great ruler of his kingdom. So now at the, um, at the in the, he get to know slowly, slowly after, he, uh, after becoming like um, age of Kali, uh, he get to know that his death is coming near. And he made to age of uh, age of Kali. And uh, he age of Kali said, where can I stay, Maharaja Parikshit? I came to uh, under to your surrender. I, I'm taking your shelter. So Maharaja Parikshit uh, can't say no to him because he was also having all the characteristics of Lord Shiva, Lord Narayana, Lord uh, Krishna, Lord uh, um, uh, Rama. So uh, he said, you can st uh, you can stay poor places like uh, in where they where they have intoxication, where they having uh, uh, like where they having uh, um, what you call go uh, where they having like gold. sex, gold also 
uh, wherever like uh, all the sinner activities go, sinful activities going on, you can stay there. So as soon as he get the boon, he enters into the Maharaja Parikshit uh, crown. So uh, from that Maharaja Parikshit uh, uh, get some effect of Kali. Then uh, he went to the forest to uh, that like at that time Chatriya went to the forest to uh, to uh, to have like uh, killing animals or what do you say, Mataji? There hunting, hunting. Hunting, yeah. Hunting. Uh, they go for hunting, and uh, in that uh, Maharaja Parikshit was where he went very far, and he saw the Shamik Munika Ashram, and he, uh, he was very hungry and thirsty. So he went to take uh, shelter mm -hmm. of uh, Shamik Rishi, but Shamik Rishi was like uh, in a meditation, deep meditation. Uh, so um, uh, he uh, he couldn't hear Maharaja Parikshit preach uh, that uh, he was very hungry and thirsty. Uh, but Maharaja Parikshit was keep on asking him. At last, he was getting tired because um, Shamik Rishi didn't get, get uh, give any answer. So he saw the dead snake uh, nearby Shamik Rishi, and he put uh, around his surround his snake. So uh, Shamik Rishi's son, uh, so uh, uh, he was in. Uh, he went to bath at the river, and uh, he got to know that uh, his father. Uh, um, Maharaja Parikshit uh, did the uh, Maharaja Parikshit put the snake around his neck, and uh, that's why uh, he gave um, Samikrishi son gave him a curse that he will kill by uh, snake Takshak Takshak snake in the seven days. Uh, so Maharaja Parikshit was uh, so kind and uh, he was so like uh, happy. He didn't even hesitate. Like he didn't even hesitate or hesitate or didn't even get angry by this uh, curse. Uh, he was uh, thinking uh, what to do after the, uh, how to do my seven days, uh, uh, what must I do? So he took a shelter of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and he took a shelter of, uh, um, he took a shelter of uh, um, Shukdev, uh, Shukdev Goswami. And he went to, uh, he went to him as a disciple of Shukdev Goswami and Shukdev Goswami gave him a, uh, um, give him a whole, uh, uh, he recited whole Srimad Bhagavatam nearby Maharaja Parikshit. Uh, so Maharaja Parikshit have like those characteristics from Arjuna because he was a grandson of Arjuna and he was related to Lord Sri Krishna also because uh, he was a grandson of uh, Lord Sri Krishna's uh, sister also uh, because uh, Lord Shri, uh, because Arjuna was married to Subhadra, Lord Sri Krishna's uh, sister and uh, uh, Subhadra and Arjuna have a son Abhimanyu and uh, Abhimanyu married to Uttara and Abhimanyu and Uttara having Maharaja Parikshit. So um, in seven days, Maharaja Parikshit took a shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam, took a shelter of Sukhde Goswami, who was also a great disciple of, uh, who was also a great uh, devotee of the Lord and disciple of Vyasadeva. So uh, Srimad Bhagavatam also came from Lord to Narad Dev, Narad Muni, and from Narad Muni also uh, it came to Vyasamuni, and from Vyasamuni it goes to uh, Shukde Goswami. Goswami. Shukde Goswami was the son of a Vyasadeva. So, uh, sorry, like Mataji, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Sorry, Mataji, sorry. I'm sorry to stop you. But uh, if, if there's much more, maybe we can take it on to the next lesson. Yes, no problem, Mataji. Mm -hmm. So we can carry on with Bhagavad Gita and then maybe next week you can continue from where you stopped. Just mark from where you yes. stopped. Yes. And then we'll continue sure. the story. Is that okay? All right. yes, Thank you very much for that nectar, Mataji, because I think it was important for everybody to know who Raja Parikshit is. Very important, prominent character in our uh, scriptures. Okay, we need to understand because of his mercy, we got to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so let's start with today's uh, reading from verse 64. I think it's up to share my screen. Again, okay, off on my screen, chapter 2, verse 64. Right. Raja Tesha Vimukes to Vishayan Indriyas Charan, Atma Vashe Vidhe Yatma Prasadatam Atika Chati. So here, <clears throat> this verse means, but a person free from all attachment and aversion. And able to control his senses through regulated principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. 
and Srila Prabhupada's purport goes as follows. It is already explained that one may externally control the senses by some artificial process, but unless the senses are engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is every chance of the fall. Although the person in full Krishna consciousness may apparently be on a sensual plane, because of his being Krishna conscious, he has no attachment to sensual activities. The Krishna conscious person is concerned only with the satisfaction of Krishna and nothing else. Therefore, he is transcendental to all attachment and detachment. If Krishna wants the devotee, he can do anything which is ordinarily undesirable, undesirable. And if Krishna does not want, he shall not do that which he would have ordinarily done for his own satisfaction. Therefore, to act or not to act. Therefore, to act or not to act is within his control because he acts only under the direction of Krishna. This consciousness is the causeless mercy of the Lord, which the devotee can achieve in spite of him, his being attached to sensual fact. Right? Under the direction, the devotee acts under the direction of Krishna, takes our minds back to where Krishna was referred to as Rishikesha. Remember that, Rishikesha, the director of senses, the director of Arjuna's senses. And our uh, aim is also, we, we uh, also would like Krishna to direct our senses so we can also be brought onto this platform. This consciousness is the causeless mercy. When you get onto that platform, you must understand that it's the mercy of the Lord. And so next verse, 265. Prasade sarva dukhanam anir ashyo pajayate prasanna cheta sohiya ashu buddhi parya parya vashishtate Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. For one, thus satisfied in Krishna consciousness, the threefold miseries of material existence exist no longer. In such satisfied consciousness, one's intelligence is soon, soon well established. So for one to be, when one is placed in Krishna consciousness, then he does not experience this miseries of life. That kind of misery does not exist anymore, right? Sixty-six. Anybody wants to read this verse? I'll read the purport. Somebody can read the Sanskrit. Who wants to read the Sanskrit? You're reading Nath Kishore Mataji? Yes, Mataji, I can okay. recite. Yeah, you can recite the, the, the Sanskrit Adi the Purport. Sure, Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nasti Buddhira Yuktasya, no, Chayu Tasya Bhavana. Should I continue, okay. Mataji? Um, I'll read the English. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind, without which there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? If a person is unhappy, can he be peaceful? That's not possible, right? That's what Krishna is saying here. So the purport goes like this. Unless one is in Krishna consciousness, there is no possibility of peace. So it is confirmed in the fifth chapter, 529, that when one understands that Krishna is the only enjoyer of all good results of sacrifice and penance, that he is the proprietor of all universes or universal manifestations, and that he is the real friend of all living entities, then only can one have real peace. Therefore, if one is not Krishna conscious, there cannot be a final goal for the mind. Disturbance is due to want of an ult ultimate goal, 
And when one is certain that Krishna is the enjoyer, proprietor, and friend of everyone and everything, then one can, with a steady mind, bring about peace. Therefore, one who is engaged without a relationship with Krishna is certainly always in distress and without peace. However much he may make a show of peace and spiritual advancement in life, Krishna consciousness is a self manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in a relationship with Krishna. So here Prabhupada is telling us, if we want peace, if we want to achieve that goal, we have to first establish a relationship with Krishna. And how do we establish a relationship with Krishna as discussed previously? We have to engage, we have to engage in service to Krishna. If you serve somebody, you establish a relationship with the person. And if you establish a relationship with a personality like Krishna, who is the supreme personality of Godhead, then your consciousness is elevated and you make spiritual advancement. And then what happens? When Krishna consciousness is self-manifested, you attain a peaceful condition. That's what Prabhupada is explaining to us here. Okay, who's reading now? The Sanskrit for us? Veronica Mahesh? Okay, yeah. I'll read. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Indriyanam hi charatam yan mano nu vityate, tat asya harati prajnam vayur navam ivam bhasi. Okay, I'll, I'll read the English today for everyone, right? You all read okay. the Sanskrit for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. As a strong wind sweeps about, uh, sweeps away a boat on the water, even one of, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. So the purport: unless all of the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, even one of them engaged in sense gratitude can deviate the, the devotee from the path of transcendental advancement. As mentioned in the life of Maharaj Ambarish, all the senses must be engaged in Krishna consciousness, for that is the correct technique of controlling the mind. We spoke about control of the mind before, and we said it is very difficult, it is very difficult to achieve, and we said before that even Arjuna said to Krishna, we'll read later on, that the mind is even more difficult to control than the wind. But here, Prabhupada says to us that there's a technique of controlling the mind and how how what is that technique the technique is by engaging your senses in serving the lord you engage all your senses and the example used here is maharaj amarish whom we discussed last week as well right so so this is a nice analogy here a strong wind can just sweep away a boat on the water so likewise if your senses are all over the place if your mind is focusing on the senses then what happens? Then your intelligence is taken away, right? So that's quite a nice analogy that our Krishna makes for us. Right, 268. Who wants to read Kadrita Mataji? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Asmaryasya Mahabaha Nidrihitani Sarvashaha Indriyasmi Driyas Dri Sebyas Sasya Prajana Pratishitam. Okay, thank you. Four almighty arms, one whose senses are restrained from their objects, is certainly of CD intelligence. One can um, curb the forces of sense gratification only by means of Krishna consciousness or engaging all the senses in the um, transcendental loving service of the Lord. As enemies are curbed by superior force, the senses can similarly be curbed. Mm -hmm. uh, not by any human 
in their work, but only by keeping them engaged in the service of the Lord. One who has understood uh, this is that only by Krishna consciousness is one really established in intelligence and that one should practice this art under the guidance of a, bo a bona fide spiritual master is called um, sadaka or a suitable candidate for liberation. Thank you, Mataji. Okay, so here, again, Prabhupada is telling us that the only way is to keep our senses engaged in the service of the Lord. Okay, so one can, you can curb this, the process of sense gratification by means of Krishna consciousness or engaging the senses in transcendental loving service of the Lord. Um, Sadhaka is a suitable candidate for liberation. Okay, there, there, there's a, a, a reference made here in intelligence, and one should practice this art under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. We will deal with uh, those topics later on in, in later chapters. All right, in more detail. So 269. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yani Sha Sarva Bhutana, Tasyam Jagara, Jagarti Samyami, Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani, Sani Sha Pashyato Munihe, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective state, sage. Purport, there are two classes of intelligent men. One is intelligent in material activities for sense gratification. And on the other end, the other is introspective and awake to the cultivation of self-realization. Activities of introspective sage or thoughtful man are night for persons materially absorbed. Materialistic persons remain asleep in such night due to their ignorance of self-realization. The introspective sage remains alert in the night of all materialistic men. The sage feels transcendental pleasure in the gradual advancement of spiritual culture, whereas the man in materialistic activities being asleep to self-realization dreams of varieties of sense pleasure, feeling sometimes happy and sometimes distressed in his sleeping condition. The introspective man is always indifferent to materialistic happiness and stress. He goes on with his self-realization activities undisturbed by material reactions. So this reminds us of, of, of verse 214, I think it is, uh, where Krishna speaks of um, the ever-changing uh, seasons of winter and summer and how a sober person is not disturbed by such a change. That's what Prabhupada is talking about here. A man who is of sound, transcendental knowledge. He is indifferent to happiness and distress. And he goes on with his self-realization activities without being disturbed by material reactions. Verse 70. Apuryamanam machila pratistam samudram apaha pravishanti atvat tatvat kamayam pravishanti salve sa shantim apnoti na kamika kamakami. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Is, um, uh, let's see. You have a chance, we didn't hear. Kalina Mataji, we didn't hear your voice. Hare Krishna, do you want to read the Papa for us, Mataji? Hare Krishna, Mataji. You can read the purport for us. Although the vast ocean 
Although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his full fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the rivers that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities and he does not even slight and he is not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present. Because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady like the ocean and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who have to fulfill desires, even up to the limit of liberation, what to speak of material success, never attain peace. The fruitive workers, the sal salvationists, and also the yogis who after mystic powers are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the sense in the service of the Lord, and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The, the devotees of Krishna have no material desires, and therefore they are in perfect peace. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So another nice analogy here Krishna tells us. Like rivers enter into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace, and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Another nice analogy here, right? So see, although the ocean, Prabhupada says, is always filled with water, it's always, especially during the raining season, the ocean is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with very much more water. But the ocean remains the same. It's always steady. It's not agitated. Isn't it? Like how our senses are always agitated with all these material elements. Okay, so we spoke about this analogy here, which is up on my screen. As the ocean is always being filled by rivers, but remains steady and not agitated, a person fixed in Krishna consciousness remains undisturbed even amidst the incessant flow of desires. There will always be desires. It is human nature. We will always have desires. But if you are fixed steady in Krishna consciousness, it wouldn't be that difficult. Slowly but surely your consciousness gets purified. Okay, of material desires. 71. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Vihaya Kama, Kama Niha Sarvan, Um, Umam Sha Charati, Nir Sprisha, Nir Sprisha, Nirmano Nir Ahankara, Sha Shanti Madhika Chati, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. A person who has given up all desires for sense gratification, who lives free from desires, who has given up all sense of proprietorship and is devoid of false ego, he alone can attain real peace. How about says in his purport? To become desireless means not to desire anything for sense gratification. They can desire. <laughs> But you don't desire for yourself a sense gratification. You desire to gratify and serve Krishna. In other words, desire for becoming Krishna consciousness is actually desireless, desirelessness. To understand one's actual position as the eternal servitor of Krishna without falsely claiming this material body to be oneself, 
and without falsely claiming proprietorship over anything in the world, is the perfect stage of Krishna consciousness. One who is situated in this perfect stage knows that because Krishna is the proprietor of everything, everything must be used for the satisfaction of Krishna. Arjuna did not want to fight for his own satisfaction, but when he became fully Krishna conscious, he fought because Krishna wanted him to fight. Remember at the beginning, we discussed the reasons for Arjuna uh, fighting in this war. We said one, he's a Shakti. And we also explored that two, Krishna wanted him to fight and he's a religious war. So to satisfy the Lord, because the Lord instructed him and the Lord is authority, Arjuna had to fight. So that's Prabhupada is making reference to that here. But when he became fully Krishna conscious, he fought because Krishna wanted him to fight. Likewise, we too need to do what Krishna wants us to do. And what Krishna wants us to do is laid out here in Shastra. The instructions are flowing through from Krishna directly in the Bhagavad Gita. So we need to do what Krishna wants us to do by following attentively, his instructions attentively. Also coming via his bona fide representatives being our spiritual masters. Okay. For himself, there was no desire to fight. But for Krishna, the same Arjuna fought to the best of his ability. A real desirelessness is the desire for satisfaction of Krishna, not an artificial attempt to abolish desires. So we can't artificially say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting rid of this desire and that desire and that desire, and the mind is desiring everything under the sun, because that will be false. Okay. The living entity cannot be desireless or senseless, but he does not have to change the quality of his desire. He has he does have to change the quality of his desires. A materially desireless person certainly knows that everything belongs to Krishna. Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam. That's a reference uh, from Sri Isha Upanishad, right? Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam Yakincha Jagatyam Jagat Tena Tena Bunjita Magrita Kashya Tisvitanam. Mantra number two. Everything belongs to Krishna, and everybody just gets his own quota. That's what that mantra means. So everything belongs to Krishna. And therefore, he does not falsely claim proprietorship over anything. The transcendental knowledge is based on self-realization. Self-realization means knowing perfectly well that every living entity is an eternal part and parcel of Krishna in, in spiritual identity. And that the eternal position of every of living entity is therefore never to on the level of Krishna or greater than him. This understanding of Krishna consciousness is the basic principle of real peace. Right? So what's the basic principle of real peace? Knowing perfectly well that every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. And also knowing the eternal position of every living entity. That the living every every living entity is not on the same level of Krishna. Neither is that living entity greater than Krishna. So one has to understand Krishna's supreme position as the source of creation and the proprietor of everything. And this understanding, Prabhupada says, is Krishna consciousness, and it is the basic principle of real peace. In one piece, we have to understand first who is God. What is God's position? What is our position in relationship to, to Bhagavan? Okay, we've got the last verse to do. It's already quarter two. Um, but, I, you know, I actually wanted to go through a summary of this chapter as well at the end, very quickly. Okay, let's do this first. Let's see how we go for time. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Esha Brahmi, Sita Partha, Nainam Pratya Vimoyati, Sita Vasyam, Antakale Pi, Brahma Nirvana Mrichati, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. Oh, I must have the translation here. Sorry to both. Please, I'll read it from my book. 
That is the way of spiritual and godly life after attaining which a man is not bewildered. If one is thus situated, even at the hour of death, one can enter into the kingdom of God. That's what this translation is. And the purport, Prabhupada goes to say, one can attain Krishna conscious, consciousness or divine life at once within a second, or one may attain such a state of life even after millions of births. So it takes some longer and some can get it done in this one lifetime. It is only a matter of understanding and accepting the facts. Katvanga Maharaj attained the state of life just a few minutes before his death by surrendering unto Krishna. Nirvan means ending the process of materialistic life. According to Buddhist philosophy, there is only void and after the completion of this material life. But Bhagavad Gita teaches differently. Bhagavad Gita says that everything doesn't end when the soul leaves the body, right? That's the difference between Buddhism or voidism and Krishna consciousness. Actual life begins after the completion of this material life. For the gross materialist, it is sufficient to know that one has to end this materialistic way of life. But for persons who are spiritually advanced, there is another life after this materialistic life. So we know after this material body is over, there is another life. What kind of life lies there, dear devotees, up to us entirely? Depending on our practice, on our sadhana, on our last thought, on our, our goals. Okay. So before ending this life, if one fortunately becomes Krishna conscious, he at once attains the stage of Brahma Nirvan. There is no difference between the kingdom of God and devotional service of the Lord, since both of them are on the absolute plane to being to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord is to have attained the spiritual kingdom. This is very interesting what Prabhupada says. So it may not necessarily mean that you've got to physically go back home to Krishna's world to be situated on a transcendental plane. Prabhupada is saying to be purely engaged now in transcendental loving service to the Lord is to have spirit, attained spiritual kingdom. And we quoted previously in our other classes some examples of, of these personalities from Shastra. In the material world, the activities of sense gratification, whereas in the spiritual world, the activities of Krishna consciousness, attainment of Krishna consciousness, even during this life, is immediate attainment of Brahman. And one who is situated in Krishna consciousness has certainly already entered into the kingdom of God. So you see how high, high, what a high platform it is to attain Krishna consciousness. So much so that Prabhupada says, if you're situated in Krishna consciousness, you have already entered into the kingdom of God. It's the matter of training this mind and focusing. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has summarized the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita being the contents of the whole text. In Bhagavad Gita, subject matters are Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. In the second chapter, Karma Yoga and Gyan Yoga have been clearly discussed. And a glimpse of Bhakti Yoga has also given as contents of the complete text. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purpose of the sec to the second chapter of, Bhagavad, of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of its contents. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes and I'd really like to go through um, some points that I've picked up on our chapter two, right? And we can open to discussion. So just a, a summary of this chapter. Rama Nirvana Richaki in our last verse, the first two, one who attains the spiritual kingdom of God. So now in chapter two, at the beginning of chapter two, Sanjaya described to Dhritarashtra that Arjun was full of compassion and refused to fight, okay? Krishna advised Arjuna that these impurities were not befitting of a man who knows the value of life. Then further on, Arjuna, he posed many arguments and reasons of as to why he doesn't want to fight. He said to Krishna, I do not want to enjoy a blood-stained kingdom. And he put down his bow and he said, I shall not fight. But then, in uh, verse 7 of chapter 2, Arjuna, as he put on his bow, because he was feeling so confused and bewildered, 
he surrendered to Krishna. And that verse we said was the turning point of the Bhagavad Gita because the relationship between Arjun and Krishna now changed from friendship to uh, guru and disciple, right? Arjun being the disciple. But Karpaniya Doso Bahadas Bhava, that verse I'm referring to. Then Krishna went on to explain that the body dies and uh, not the soul, so Arjuna should not grieve. Krishna gave him many reasons. And then Krishna spoke about the eternal, eternal position of the soul, of the jiva. He says to uh, 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 Arjuna that the soul transmigrates. And the reference to this is 213, where uh, Krishna says, As a body, soul passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age. The soul similarly passes into another body at the time of death, and a sober person is not able to pass such a change. Krishna said that to Arjuna. And Krishna goes on after that, and he says how one should tolerate a happiness and distress, and, and, and that Arjuna should not be distressed about uh, so-called killing his uh, kinsmen or his, his cousins and his gurus, because he's not actually killing him. And uh, he should not worry about be, uh, get too distressed or too happy in any situation. And that reference is 214. And Krishna goes on to say how the soul is indestructible. And he goes on to speak about the eternal position of the soul in 22. 222, he speaks of the transmigration, but how one puts on, uh, takes off his own gar uh, old garments and puts on new garments. Likewise, the soul has to leave and dispose of the old body and go into a new body, a rejuvenated body, to continue, hopefully, his Krishna consciousness. And then Krishna goes on to say to Arjuna, he speaks about how the soul is eternal, and he says to Arjuna, but be careful, Arjuna, you are a Shatri. And a Shatri who dies on the back of him, is sure to attain at least heaven. And it is also your duty as a Shatri, because you're a protector of society, and you need to fight for what is yours. yours. And one who is born, Krishna says, is sure to die. And one who dies is sure to be born. And the reference there is uh, verse 27. Verse 32, Krishna goes on to say that these fighting opportunities that arise for Kshatriyas open doors to heaven. And Arjuna will enjoy either heavenly or earthly kingdom. So there's no loss. So if a Shatri dies on um, the battlefield, he'll enjoy the heavenly planet. And if he does not die on the battlefield, he'll enjoy kingdom on earth because he would have won the kingdom. And then he also goes on now, Krishna goes and gives uh, Arjuna another uh, reason not to uh, leave the battlefield. He said, if you leave the battlefield, People will think you fled out of fear. And for a person of Arjuna's caliber and intelligence level and being a Shatri, people will start speaking of Arjuna, uh, saying Arjuna is uh, infamous, his infamy. And, and that will be worse than death for a Shatri to be blasphemed in such a way. And Krishna went on. And in verse 42 and 43, he, there's a very nice analogy here Krishna used as well. Okay, now here he speaks of a um, flowery language of the Vedas, sorry, where we spoke about this in detail as well. He said, men of small knowledge are shattered. Flowery languages of the Vedas. So Arjuna was speaking at some point a lot. He was quoting and quoting reasons why he shouldn't fight. But Krishna says, no, you will stand up and fight because there's no point in getting baffled about the flowery language of the Vedas, when all you should worry about is your duty, your service to Krishna, establishing a relationship with Krishna, and achieving your goal thereafter. So the purpose of the Vedas here are served best by one who understands the purpose behind the Vedas. We referenced verse 46 on this. So if you understand the purpose behind the Vedas, then that's how you serve the Vedas the best. Okay, say, and what is the purpose of the Veda? To understand and establish your relationship with your creator, your relationship with Krishna, and to engage all your mind and say,
this is a devotional service. So do your duty without being attached to the result. Krishna goes on to speak of that now. Actually, you're going to do your duty, but do it without being attached to the result. Because being attached to the result will keep you bound to this material world. And you can free yourself from working material world. How? By engaging in devotional service. Devotional service we discussed are various kinds. And we, we all gave examples of the different kinds of devotional service. So a sage of steady mind, Krishna says, is free from anger, fear, and attachment. So he wanted Arjun to be of steady mind. To get rid of that attachment factor to the opposition party and just go on with his duty and fight. Another nice analogy was used here in uh, verse 58, where we spoke about the tortoise. Krishna said, just like the tortoise will draw his senses, will draw himself within his shell, likewise, we should draw our senses within ourselves and engage in devotional service. Draw our senses from material elements and en engage it in devotional service. So one satisfied in Krishna consciousness, for one who is satisfied in Krishna consciousness, material miseries no longer exist. If one is not con connected to supreme, to the supreme in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be steadiness of the mind and hence no peace. We read this now in the last few verses. Then a nice analogy was pointed out again by Krishna here in uh, verse 67 about the wind. As a strong wind sweeps away a boat, similarly, roaming senses on which mind focuses can carry away a, mind's, a man's intelligence. So if your senses are going to roll, roam all over the place, it's going to take away that intelligence. When the intelligence is taken away, you will fall down. So therefore, Krishna says, give up desire for sense gratification. And when you do that, your ego goes. And when your ego goes, peace is attained. Krishna says that in the last few verses, 17. 71, 72, somewhere there. And this is the way of spiritual life. You will not be bewildered if you follow these steps that Krishna is saying. And if situated in this state at the end of life, then one can enter into the kingdom of God. And that is the goal of the soul. Isn't it? Who's the soul? Us. So that is our goal, the goal of the soul. To enter into the spiritual kingdom of God. Right now here, Prabhupada said in the purport just now, we can be uh, it is like being in the spiritual kingdom of God if you engage in devotion. And this kind of practice can help our souls not even come back here after this, after this life. By constant abhyas practice. So one who attains the spiritual kingdom of God is referred to in this verse as Brahma Nirvana Richati. The last line of uh, text is it. Okay, dear devotees, that was quite an intense uh, chapter, chapter two. Um, really packed, power packed, power packed with instructions and knowledge really, really setting. It's really the contents of Bhagavad Gita summarized, hence labels as such. And we are now exactly at eight o'clock. We still got to change their pronouns to you. But with your permission, I would like to take another five minutes to just quickly get some realizations from everybody, if that's okay. Can I have some indication, please? Is that okay, Hare Krishna? That's, that's okay. Thank you. All right, so Veronica, Mataji, you want to start quickly? We're just going to give everybody a minute each, right? Um, just quick realizations of chapter two. Uh, yeah, as as you said, it's it's so power packed, and it is like you know, it's like quite bewildering for me. It's like it's absolutely power packed, and it's you know, currently we've experienced a death in the family, and when I think about what what we read in chapter two, it just kind of ties up with everything that's happened during the course of the week that's gone by, and how um how you, how you lived your life is very important and but also more very important is your last moment in life and you know there's uh there's a there's there's a there's a sloka mm -hmm. there where, okay. where krishna says at the last second you can you can reach you can reach the kingdom of god 
Mm -hmm. And for us, you know, we know how all the chanting and uh, all the, the the reading of the Bhagavad Gita and everything that we did, you know, enhanced that soul to leave that body peacefully. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that came to mind now as you read that last chap chapter two. Okay, thank you very much, Pranika. Valid contribution. Now, Kishore Mataji, anything from your side? Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, is uh, okay, uh, chapter two is a whole uh, summarized uh, like uh, of uh, Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. and uh, I realized that uh, whatever we do, like whatever karma we do, we have to pay back, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, follow the four regulatory principles. What we mm -hmm. are, uh, we are to, uh, we have told by Shila Prabhupada and. We are told by Krishna, uh, Hare Krishna conscious also, and uh, mm, uh, we must uh, chant uh, uh, 16 rounds so we can focus our yes. uh, mind to the Krishna's lotus, lotus which we can surrender to ourselves to the. And Bhagavad Gita is a uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita is a main uh, because it's teaching us a big life lesson also. So we have to put in a practice every day by reading Bhagavad Gita every day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. Kadruta Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare From Krishna. chapter two, I realize that we are not this body. We are the souls, eternal souls. And um, Krishna is not speaking especially for Arjuna. He's speaking for us, instructing us. And we uh, have to follow example of Arjuna and Abharash Maharaj and uh, to engage our senses in Krishna consciousness. The only way we can reach the, um, our uh, nature constitutionally of servitor and eternal, um, um, eternal servitor of the Lord. The uh, Lord is um, the creator and is the enjoyer and is the supreme. And uh, this is my realization from the chapter two. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. Shalina Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna. I, I think of this chapter, um, uh, text uh, 40, 40 appeal to me uh, the most. Um, it, uh, it's where uh, no, uh, even a small endeavor, um, there is no loss. There's no loss in, in a small effort. And um, that very small effort can just save us from danger. So I think that's very important to take away with us as well. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I will read that verse again. <laughs> Thank you. Paramatma Prabhu. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, for me, I can see that uh, Prabhupada is helping us to be relieved from the miseries of uh, material life. So in, in all these verses, he's giving us a solution to be Krishna consciousness. Yes. Uh, that's what I can see, Mati. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Prabhu. Risha Mataji? Do you want to share anything with us? Bharati Mataji, you want to share anything with us? Rasavati Mataji? Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, like for me, I feel like uh, Krishna has given us uh, this um, uh, wordings here. The, the, uh, and I feel like we, we have to surrender to him at any cost. Like, you know, that's what the, the realization I have of this verse, that we must surrender to him fully, wholly, and with love and devotion. So whatever he has given us instructions, we follow it properly. Uh, we will endeavor to reach our goals, like whatever yes. we need to do. So that is why my realization of this chapter. Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank Radhika you. Mataji, Hare Krishna. Any realizations from you, Radhika Mataji? Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, nothing from me today. Okay. Thank you. The Modal Prabhu? 
Haribo, Haribo, Prabhu. So they are joining late, but uh, um, I think the chapter is is helpful because it give it gives our identity as spiritual souls, and that the body and the senses, or they uh, we cover the the factors we shouldn't be decided by them. Um, really, if we can get to level where we understand or realize that we are spiritual souls, uh, that will be a, some big achievement. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your realization. Uh, did I leave anybody out? Anybody else? I think we covered everyone. Yeah, I'll take the power. Though. Right. And okay, whatever you decide. I'll also leave some. So if you want, you can leave the power, and I can also leave you back home. Okay. I think we've covered everyone. So let us proceed with the Shingadev's pronouns. Right, not a problem. I'll tell you what I'm Is sure. somebody uh, unmuted here on this chat? Ramatna Prabhu, is that okay now? I'll say it's okay now. Okay, thank you. Tell me what size high is. Okay, it goes again. Who's only getting unmuted, Ramatna Prabhu? Sir, Veronica Ramatna. Okay, can you, can you mute everybody, please? I've mm -hmm. done that, but I'm okay. muted again. Okay, let's let's go now. Nashinga Dev pronounced, right? Namaste, Nashinga all glories to the same devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the same devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the same devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories, all glories to Shri Guru and Shri Guranga. All glories, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Panchika Patarukhya's chair, Kripasi Indukhya Evacha, Patita Nam Pavane, Bio Vaishnavi, Yonamona Maha, Nantakoti Vaishnav Rindiki, Dantarashi Vantagat Gita. Thank you, dear devotees. So we'll see you all next week. And we'll start with chapter three next week. Thank you, Matanji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Shukratri to you. Thank you. Hare Krishna.